Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video and welcome back to the web application penetration testing series. In this video, we are going to be looking at something that is extremely important and something that should be understood completely, and that is cross-site scripting. All right, now before we get started, I'm just gonna uh, explain what we're gonna be looking at in this video. So we're gonna start off with explaining what uh, cross-site scripting is. I'm gonna be showing you the environment that we'll be using for testing any of these, uh, any of these attacks, just because they allow us to illustrate or they allow me to explain how everything works, because that's the most important thing for me is that you understand what you're, you're listening to and you have a good representation of what's going on. All right. So I'll be explaining stored, um, uh, I'll be explaining reflected, stored and DOM, uh, cross site scripting. All right. So let's get started with me explaining what environment I'm currently running. So you can see that I'm running Kali. I'm currently running. So you can see that I'm running Kali Linux right now, but uh, I am going to be using the OASP Broken Web Applications project, which was recommended by a lot of you uh, because you are getting tired of using, uh, you know, the damn vulnerable web application with Metasploitable too. So a lot of you recommended that I use the OASP BWAP project or, or you know whatever you want to call it. Uh, uh, so I'll have this in the description section. It is essentially a virtual machine that you can easily just run on VirtualBox or VMware. I'm currently running it here. Uh, as you can see, I just got the uh, local IP. It's uh, 192.168.1.111. All right, so I have that running and I'm running this on Kali Linux and I already have opened up um, the URL in my browser. So you can see uh, from here, I've opened up BWAP and I've opened up WebGoat because that's what I'm going to be using to explain each of these uh, cross-site scripting attacks. So if I was to do that, uh, if I was to just open up 192.168.1.111, yours could be different. It, it, it should be different depending on your IP configuration and subnet. Then it'll take you to the OSP uh, BWA or the OS Broken Web Applications Project. The latest version as of recording this video is version 1.2. So we will be using WebGoat and BWAP um, or the Broken Web Application Project uh, for uh, for this demonstration. So the default credentials for WebGoat are going to be guest for the username and guest for the password. And for BWAP, it should give you the prompt right over there. Uh, I, th I think it's going to be a bug app or something like that. But irregardless, it will tell you what it is. All right. So make sure you open that up and you have that all set up. So I've logged into BWAP and I have a web goat started up right here. All right. So let me close that up and we are ready to go. Now, before we even move on into performing these attacks, it's very important to understand what's going on here with uh, with cross site scripting, what it is, how it works. And uh, what are you exactly taking advantage of? All right. Now, uh, this is where a lot of people make mistakes. And if you want to be a successful web application penetration tester, you need to understand, you know, from a fundamental level, what's going on here. All right. So let's get started. What is cr cross site scripting? Well, uh, simply put, it is the process of injecting a script into a into the parameter in a URL to attack a user of the site or to potentially attack the server side of uh, of the website or the web application all right so it essentially is the inject uh, the injection of a script into the parameter of a url all right that's essentially what it is now of course this may be quite confusing but don't worry i'll explain what's going on here so let's start off with uh with first of all explaining the the three types of uh cross site scripting all right the first one is reflected and then we have stored and dom so with reflected what's happening here is uh, the the data is inputted and then you know reflected directly back um, back on the screen so i'll explain this in a second all right so uh, if we are to look at this from a fundamental perspective i'll show you how to access this uh, you know how to navigate the bwap uh, just give me a second let me explain what's going on so essentially what's happening with reflected cross-site scripting is that the input is going to be stored in the parameter of the url all right. And I'll explain how this differs with each type of attack, because many of you will point out and say, well, it's not only to, to do with parameters and don't worry, I'll explain all of this. All right. So we can essentially manipulate the uh, the parameter of the URL uh, so that we can essentially run a script 
Now, what type of script? We can run a malicious script that is based in JavaScript. And I'll explain that right now. So you can see with our portal, you don't want to touch anything here. You can set the security level, but for now, I recommend setting it to low. Not that that's going to hurt anyone's ego, uh, because remember, you have to be humble to, to begin and you need to understand what's going on first. So we will open up the choose the bug section here and we want to go down into cross site scripting and we want to go into reflected, which uh, essentially deals with the get uh, the get request. So we're going to start off with that and this will really make you understand what's going on here. So if I click on that um, and I just hit hack. All right. So now it's going to give us a prompt here and you might be asking, well, what's what do you mean? What exactly is going on? If I was to not enter any details into the, um, you know, into these fields right here. So for example, you can see I just had a suggestion there. That's because I was testing it out. But if I was to hit go, you can see that in the URL, we do have the input here. So you can see the values can be edited directly into the form. So you can see first name has the, uh, the no value. And then we have the last name, which again has no value. And you can see that it is submitting a form. So what we can do is run some JavaScript code in here. And the most common way of, un uh, of explaining what's going on here, of course, not running a very malicious code right now, ex essentially explaining and demonstrating that it does work is I can run a piece of code here. Now, of course, when you put this into a practical perspective, many sites are going to filter the content that you can enter in, in these fields or these forms uh, and uh, will essentially we will not allow you to run JavaScript code, you know, obviously to protect uh, to pr protect the site from these type of attacks. Uh, but what you can do is en encapsulate it or encode it in a different type of language. Or as I said, I'll, I'll show you how everything uh, or how all of this works. So this right right now being the current security level as low, we uh it'll not uh, it'll not essentially encode it'll not verify or validate what we're entering in here, what input is being uh, given. So if we were to type in a script here, so you can say script and you can see the recommendation there script, that's mine. So if I was to type in alert and uh, this is JavaScript, so I'm pretty I am pretty sure you can you know what's going on. So we can say hello world. Um, this is an example of a reflected um, XSS or cross site scripting. And we can close that up right now. And then we need to close the script so we can do that in the next field or the next parameter. Most people like doing it from the start, but this is just to show you how robust this can be. So I type in, I close the script there and I hit go. And as you can see, it gives us the alert, which is what we, uh, and we which is what we used as our form of of me showing you that it does work and it will be processed. Uh, the input will be processed and will be sent back to you, you being the client. And we can just hit OK. And that was an example of reflected access uh, cross site scripting using the get method. Now, of course, we can I can replicate this many, many times using the other types of cross site scripting, for example, with the post, etc, etc. We'll be looking at all of that. But for now, we need to understand what's going on here. Now, next, we need to look at stored uh, cross-site scripting. This is probably my favorite because of the potential that it does have. All right, so let's go into the choose your bug menu here. And uh, we want to go into cross-site scripting and we want to go, um, we want to go for the blog. Cross-site scripting, stored uh, cross-site scripting, and we're going to select blog. And I'll explain why in a second. All right, so first, let me explain what stored cross-site scripting is. So essentially with this, uh, with the cross-site uh, scripting attacks, more specifically, the stored attacks, uh, essentially what's happening is you're attacking the input uh, and you're essentially attacking the input that is to be stored or you're attacking the data or essentially, uh, I'll explain this really simply. So you're attacking the input that is to be stored on a database. So what you're doing is you're essentially injecting malicious code that will be saved into a database or that is going to be saved by the server or the web application server and then you can definitely, uh, you, since it's being stored, you can access it later on or other users can access it. And for example, if it's running malicious code, it can trigger different things like opening the webcam of a user, stealing different type of information. I'm not going to go into what you can do with it, but you can really do a lot of stuff, a lot of malicious stuff with code. All right. So let me explain what's going on here. So with the stored cross-site scripting, you can essentially inject, uh, malicious code into the database. Again, that, then uh, that when accessed runs this malicious code. 
All right, so if I, you can see this is an example of a blog. Let me explain what I mean. The best places to implement stored cross-site scripting is in places like comments, uh, you know, forums, and again, as you can see right here, blog in the form of comments that, you know, or pages that can be accessed later or data that is being stored in directly into the database, any database for that matter, as long as it's being stored. Okay, so we can type in here something like hello, and we can submit that to the database and you can see it's getting stored. And you have the different tables, you have the uh, the number, the owner, the date and the entry. So now we can also run a script in here. Alright, so what if we were to enter a JavaScript, uh, and again, this data, given our security level, is any of the data that we're entering is not being validated, so you can essentially enter it raw. Uh, now, in re reality, if you go and try and enter a script in, the data uh, will not be accepted because, again, they're protecting their site against that. That's one way of mitigation, very basic. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. All right, so enough of me rambling on. So if we are to enter the same script we entered, uh, so we, we have to say script and we then say alert, for example, we can, you can use any type of JavaScript code you want here and you can experiment, you know, you, these web applications are there for you to experiment and test your skills out. So, uh, if I was to say, hello world, this is stored, uh, whoops, stored, uh, cross site scripting. And we just close that up there. And of course we have to close the script because we know that that will not execute if we do not code it correctly. Okay, so now we can we can add that. Uh, and uh, if I was to just hit submit right now, you can see that it's going to store and be, that being the latest blog post, you can see it's going to tell you it's going to execute the script and it's going to say hello world, this is stored uh, cross site scripting. So and an example of a blog, if you are to post this uh, on a page or a or, uh, you know, to make a blog post and inject this script in anyone who opens that page will essentially run that malicious code and whatever that code does can then furthermore you know uh, cause damage to the user or to the server depending on what you want it to do so it's all dependent on what the attacker is to do remember what i told you in the first video of this series it's all about your mindset and your 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 willingness to break things and to find out what does and doesn't work okay so that was an example of stored cross-site scripting uh, and as I've mentioned, the most important thing to understand is this, in this scenario, the data is not being validated. If it is being validated, and I'll show you that in a second, uh, or probably in the next set of videos, we'll increase the security level and I'll show you how to get, you know, past this. You can see how things change as you move along in terms of security levels. So uh, I was going to use the uh, BWAP. Uh, this is my first time using it. Uh, so I had to get a bit of an introduction through the documentation and I realized they don't have DOM uh, cross-site scripting. So uh, I that's why I had to use WebGoat. They are the only ones I know who actually allow us to run it. So I've, I've zoomed in right now. By the way, the credentials are guessed for the username and guessed for the password. So uh, essentially, I went through cross-site scripting and again, they didn't have the the DOM in here. All they were focusing on is stored and again uh, reflected. So I found it to be in the Ajax or Ajax, what, how, whatever you want to call it. And we have the uh, the DOM based uh, uh, cross site scripting. Let me explain why it's saying uh, this is based in Ajax security. This is uh, because DOM cross site scripting focuses on the client side. So any data or input that is entered whether it be a malicious code, etc., etc., is going to be processed by the client, not the server. So any of the attacks will be based, of course, on the client. Now, let me explain what I mean. Uh, if I am to run, remember JavaScript server side, client side, I, AX, for example. So if I am to run, uh, for example, a, a JavaScript code in this entry here, so script, and again, I type in alert, just being the example, and I say, hello, let's keep that simple and I close the script here, you can see that we will probably not be left with anything, we will not get any result. That's because it's being processed by the client, not by the server. So no uh, no result or no data will be reflected back to us. If it was, you know, if it was reflected cross-site scripting, it uh, the server processes it and then is reflected back to the client. So if I was to submit here, you can see that nothing happens here and that it is going to be taken as code. Now, what if we were to enter or use a language uh, that uh, that a client can understand? 
So let's say we were to to say, uh, let's see um, HTML. What if we were to use HTML? So I, I can say in here, IMG, for example, that's a very, this is the way we learned it. So IMG SRC, and we don't have an image source. So we can leave that like that. And then we can use the on error in case we get an error of image, which we will get because the image has no source on error. Uh, we can say that is going to be, uh, that is going to be equal to uh, alert. Um, and then the alert we can then put in here. We can say hello. Oops. Hello world. And we can close that up. And once we have closed it, you can see that we can, uh, uh, we can close that there and there you are so it is going to be processed by the client and you get the the dialog box or the alert with the message hello world so you can see that uh, with dom based cross-site scripting uh, it is all being processed all the input whether it be malicious or not is being processed by the client and ax is one of the la these languages that can be used so you can also incorporate ax if you wanted to or test it out remember it's all about experimentation and understanding and I've been working a lot of the, uh, on this and you guys have been wondering why I haven't been uploading, you know, cross-site scripting and videos that are very advanced. And that's because I want you to understand what's happening because there's no point of me making a video of me going through it, you know, blazing through a video extremely quickly. I want everyone to understand what's going on. You know, whatever skill level you are, even if this is your first time going through this, you know, I hope that you, you've got an understanding of what cross-site scripting is how it can be used to manipulate data, whether it be on the client side, on the database, and how you can easily just uh, transfer data with, you know, bad security in place. Of course, this is, th these attacks will be very uncommon now, but again, this was focused on more on, on an explanation point of view. Now, of course, in the next set of videos in this series, we'll be taking a look at how to perform these attacks on high level uh, security. As you can see, we can tweak the security up to a high level and set that there. And then things are going to be a little bit different because the data is now going to be validated and might not be processed in the way that you think it is. All right. So that is going to be it for this video, guys. Hopefully uh, you found value in it. If you did, please leave a like down below. If you have any suggestions or questions, let me know in the comment section on my social networks or you can hit me up on my website. So without uh, further ado, that's going to be it for this video. Uh, I'll be seeing you in the next video. Peace, guys.